Hello and welcome to another modern video. Today we're not gonna be messing around, we're gonna be looking at what I would consider the best list that I would play in, a, in, in any event, like if I had a competitive event, this is the exact 75 that I would submit. And this is because of course I've been spending a lot of time trying new things and like looking at other decks, but really hard to forget about my only my only real love and that is Samulet, of course. Uh, so since I've been playing a, a bunch of different interesting lists that I've liked to try new things and experimenting, I wanted to make a video where I should showcase the deck list that I am um, that that I feel like it's the the best thing to be playing right now. Uh, we're gonna be looking at a Karn, the Great Creator in Amulet. So I am always a big fan of uh, of Karn in Amulet. I think that it just works out very very well and it really plays to my strengths as a player. And this past weekend, Pond and Wine actually top the Modern Challenge with a similar deck to this one, uh, with a couple of changes here and there. But uh, we're gonna—I'm gonna go over my numbers real quick. So you're gonna see that I'm playing a split of three cards in the main deck plus one Cultivator Colossus, with the fourth copy of Candy Recreator hanging out here in the sideboard. This is because I think having access to the first copy of Cultivator is very, very important, particularly in the four-color control matchup. Cultivator is one of the main ways that we can actually go over the top, over what the four color deck is trying to do. So uh, as such, I think having access to a main deck copy of Colossus can be very, very impactful. However, the reason that I'm excited about playing Karn is I think that it just lines up very, very well against uh, basically the way that the place that the format is at right now. Uh, we have Living in as one of the main uh, decks in the format as well. Karn the is very good there because you get, you have the possibility of going Karn minus into a Tomb of Script, which buys you a, a lot, lot of time uh, in that matchup uh, in particular. So having access to Karn for Tomb of Script can be very, very impactful. We also have access to Grafdigger's Cage because Yawkmoth is definitely a force to be reckoned with and certainly a pretty bad matchup for us. So having access to both Grafdigger's Cage and Peeping Needle is very, very important in the matchup specifically. So it can really shines there as well. We also have access to Sky Sovereign Console Flagship. One of the ways that people figured out how to how to beat Amulet is by moving on to Magus, right? Like Amulet now has access to Boseju. Boseju makes playing around Blood Moon or like actually being able to you can only play around Blood Moon to some extent, right? Like, but Boseju allows you to actually have a very, very effective way of uh, beating a Blood Moon, right? Like you can actually uh, find your bounce land into Boseju or you can crack Expedition Map for Boseju and blow up the Blood Moon. Like you have multiple avenues. But uh, what people have been doing is they've been playing Magus of the Moon. And in fact, we see even four color decks running in the Armour Skull and Magus of the Moon as well. So as such, we can, you know, play Karn minus for like, Sky Sovereign. If the Karn dies, whatever, Sky Sovereign gets rid of the, of the Magus for good, which is very, very important. Uh, besides that, uh, we have access to a pretty small package. Besides that, we obviously have the liquid metal coating. We have walking ballista, which can randomly be impactful, being able to kill stuff like meddling mages or like ragavans or whatever. Engineered explosives because uh, it's just a fantastic card. Also, explosive is a very nice card to bring in in matchups where we cut Karn, which nowadays it's not that many, which is why I think Karn is very good right now. And uh, that's about it. Like we're not really playing a super extensive Karn package. We're not delving into Worm Call Engine. We're not delving into like Instant Rage or any of, the, of those cards. Just trying to uh, keep it to a very minimum, just nice, effective, and efficient, which gives us access to a bunch of uh, powerful cyber cards: Force of Vigor, Endurance, uh, and then the lands in Boseju, Cavern of Souls, and Radiant Fountain. This uh, right here is it's an interesting thing right now. I think that we are right now in a Bojuke Bog in the main deck metagame. And as such, even though I think that Radiant Fountain is a better main deck land overall, because it enters untapped, of course, um, because Bojuke Bog is so much better than Radiant Fountain right now, I am actually uh, main decking the copy of Bojuke Bog in, instead of the Radiant Fountain. You're also going to notice that I'm playing only a single tune copy of Cavern uh, of a Castle and three copies of Cavern of Souls. The three copies of Cavern of Souls allow me to get up to 11 untapped green sources on turn one, so we can cast our Grazer. It's not great, but I think it is, it's a reasonable enough number. I would like to get it up to 13, but I honestly just cannot find room. And this is a little bit of the price that you're paying for playing this, this Slayer Stronghold Sandhog package, right? Like, which I very much think it's worth paying, by the way. Uh, but, uh, you know, when you're playing Battlements, that allows you to have extra room to, to play on top of resources on turn one, which we can't really do right here. Um, 
And Cameron Sol is really, really good right now. Fantastic and almost a necessity. <laughs> the difference between winning and losing against Merc Tide tends to be just whether you drew your Cavern of Souls or you did not. That tends to be like what the matchup revolves around. And uh, something similar is true against uh, the four color decks. Like the four color decks are very often main deck in four copies of Counterspell. As such, you don't see yourself casting a uh, Primeval Titan off of Castle Garen Brick very often. Uh, so for that reason, you see me playing only a single copy of Castle. Not that I think that Castle is a bad card, but by no means at all. Uh, I just think that Cavern is the better card in the current metagame that we have right now. So, because of that, you're going to see that that is the split that I'm going with. I'm also playing a one Valakut, one Tolaria West. Again, trying to maximize on my green, untapped green sources on turn one. I'm also playing ten Bounce Lands. That is nine uh, green ones and a Boros Garrison. And four copies of Saga, of course. Um, that's pretty much the deck list that we're going to be trying out today, and hopefully that explains my uh, my decisions. If you're interested and you have any questions, of course, let me know in the comments down below. And if you're interested in uh, something like coaching or even uh, me playing any deck list of your choosing, you can find all the information you need in the description of the video down below. Without further ado, let's get to play some matches. All right, round number one. So the hand is actually very interesting. Because I can go turn one Saga into Amulet, and then I can crack Saga for Expedition Map to find the Bounce Land. So I think I'm going to keep this hand. Uh, but I have to Saga on one. And I want to hold on to the Gracer so like it can net me mana once I have the Bounce Land in hand. So for that reason, I'm going to hold on to it, not play just yet. Also, we're playing against Giganta, which I just noticed. Is this Affinity? That's probably Prismatic Canyon. Which obviously makes his hand a lot worse. Oh, it's been withdrawn. Okay, so it is affinity. All right, that's the land. So... I think now that I, I found a natural land, I'm gonna grace her here. So that at least I, I can get... Like, if I fail to find, like, a bounce land or something, at least I get to... I get to uh, Ursa Saga on my upkeep. I just play a Saga token. So my best draw is going to be a bounce land. Wait, what? Godless Shrine? Okay, opponent. You now have my attention. Underworld Cookbook. Ah, so we're doing some asthma stuff over there. Doing some asthma things. Okay. There's asthma. So, hmm. Opponent discarding Notawara means that I don't need to worry about... Um, oh, Emery. That's pretty good. Double Time Sieve and a Daredevil. Try it. Huh. Do we lose here? Do I just have to... <laughs> I think I just have to crack Expedition Map for Bog here. Because I'm not going to have enough time. Yeah, I think so. I failed to find the Bounce Land. If I find the Bounce Land, I can crack it. Packed for Asusa, but then I just have to play out the Bounce Land. Yeah, I think that we just have to find Bog here, as awkward as this is. Uh, because otherwise we risk straight up losing. So this gets rid of the Daredevil, and it gets rid of uh, value that my opponent could get from the Emery. So overall, a pretty good Bojuga Bog there, and honestly, like a necessary Bojuga Bog. I think it's actually likely that we lose the game if we don't Bojuga Bog there. That was a really good Emery. <laughs> a really, really good Emery. Interesting. So what my opponent could have done there is they could have just discarded the cookbook to the other cookbook and then Emery back the cookbook. I don't know why they wouldn't do that. They basically get a free food, which enables them to Asmo. So I think they made like a, a, little, a little bit of a mistake there. Maybe I should have blocked. Alrighty. Um, do I pact for a suicide is the question. I think I force my opponent to pop the Asmo right here. This is five mana total, which is very awkward. But now I'm forcing my opponent to discard a, a real card. Oh, they 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 top decked the Daredevil. That's really bad news for us. Yeah, that's extremely bad news now. Extremely, extremely bad news. I did this um, on purpose, by the way. Just sequence my lands like this so that I would force because I'm not going to be using the four mana anyways. And I'm not going to pact, right? Because I, if, if I pact, I need to play this out. So I think I'm still going to bounce the Bajuka Bog here. Um, but 
Yeah, my idea was to like force my opponent to discard another card in order to uh, to kill the Dryad, but they naturally drew the Oval Chase Daredevil as their one draw step from the Unearth, so obviously I get punished now. Yeah, we're in a little bit of trouble here. We're in a little bit of trouble here. I really need to find... Oof. Well, that means we... L I guess we don't just lose. But we basically have to find Karn right now. We basically have to find Karn right now. This also gives my opponent tokens to make their saga. Um, eh, sorry, treasures to make their saga tokens. Which is very scary. So I think we lose now? Second amulet doesn't really do anything for me. And we don't have double green, so I'm just gonna bog. Because this makes it so if I find an untapped green source next turn, I can Titan and I can maybe do something. I don't think there's anything I can do that allows me to go over the top of this Asmo, though. The Asmo plus Academy Manufacturer combo is gonna be very strong. Also, they shouldn't have popped the treasure. They have a Sprintly Trump here. They should have used that. Those are some large constructs. Is this lethal? Yeah, this is actually just lethal. Yeah, it's actually just lethal. So they just Asmo, crack two food tokens, kill my Gracer, and swing for lethal. <sighs> that escalated quickly. <laughs> yeah, it was all because my opponent top decked that Daredevil. Daredevil really turbocharged my opponent's deck. Um, so forces are obviously fantastic. Forces are great. Fourth Karn is great. And I think I want Boseju. Yeah. I think those are the cards that I want. As far as Cardas, I do not want. I think I can get away with cutting the Cavern. I think I don't need Colossus. And lastly, I think I can cut one Gracer. Oh, we gotta make one more cut. I could probably cut the other Cavern too. Could even see cutting the, the Castle, honestly. Let's go with this. All right, game number two. Uh, this hand is very awkward, but I think I'll keep it. Yeah. So we have uh, Dryad mana, we have Titan mana, but we just drew our castle, which is an untapped, which is an ETB tapped land, which is gonna make things very awkward. Uh, the strength of Force of Vigor uh, makes me feel happy enough about this hand, however. That's an incredible draw. Absolutely incredible draw. So now I can Titan on turn three. Here's my Explorer. Here's my castle, here we go. So next turn I can pack for Titan, which is pretty nice. And now my opponent is gonna be able to Asmo, but I don't really care, which is a good place to be. There's a Daredevil, another cookbook. An opponent's gonna get a bunch of tokens now. Bubble. I kinda wanna get rid of these cookbooks. So we get rid of both cookbooks. They mailed the third one. My opponent's gonna get a couple of foods here. That's fine, whatever. Um, but now we're gonna get to resolve Titan, and Titan's going to attack, and it's gonna get, um, and it's gonna get a Bujuka box. So, opponent's gonna have no books. So play this out. That was here. Packed. <clears throat> For prime time. Play prime time. Opponent's got no interaction. So we're just gonna haste here. And then, and then on attack, I think I want to play around Damping Sphere. So I was going to get just a green bounce land and a Bojuga Bog. And that allows me to just cast my Dryad. And even if my opponent has Damping Sphere, we can still pay for a pact on my upkeep. So I was going to do that, but my opponent saw the writing on the wall. All right, game number three. I mean, Explore is a hell of a drug, isn't it? <laughs> Explore is just so good. Anything else? I don't think we want Endurance. I don't think this is what the matchup's about, really. I just realized the Grafteer's Cage stops Emery, which is pretty hot, but probably not relevant right now. Okay, game number three. I think this hand is going to be a little bit too slow. Because we, we get to Karn, but then if my opponent has literally anything, we're not going to be able to protect it, so I'm just going to ship it. Well, no lander means moving into five. Man, that's that sucks. <sighs> that really sucks. Going down to five. And if I had seen a Gracer in the previous hand, I would have snapped that hand off. If I had seen an Explorer, same thing. If I had been able to play that card on turn three, I think I would have, I would have kept it. But 
uh, I, I just couldn't. But I'm also six, we're gonna go with five. All right, this sounds good. So we're gonna keep this one. And I think we're just gonna bottom Gruel Turf. And I actually think, huh, this is, huh. So I think this is between whether we bought on the Celestia Sanctuary or we bought on the Primeval Titan. Because I think the Karn is going to be the better card. If I bought on the Sanctuary, then I risk not finding the land in time for Karn. But I want to turn through the Karn anyway, and Sanctuary doesn't allow me to turn through the Karn, so I think I'm going to ship the Sanctuary. That does, however, that does make the prime time worse, because I'm going to be farther away from casting it. Like, I just don't have enough lands. But I think that Karn is going to be my plan, and prime time is going to be, like, my backup plan, I guess. Put in place a Delta, fetches. I really don't want to see a turn one Thoughtseize. Like, if, if my opponent has a turn one Thoughtseize, that's probably going to be good enough to win the game. Fetch Godless Shrine, Black Source, Thoughts is. <laughs> yep. Yep. Seems like they're going to take the, the Karn. Or if they have a way to pressure the Karn, they're going to take the Gracer. But it looks like Karn is the pick. All right. I mean, that's a, that's a strong card. And even more so, this is a good card for my opponent to not know about. So it's very likely that I'm going to try to um, just hard cast this. So put in place Water Grave, Shredder. Good old birdie. Discarding land, so Gracer is gonna keep this Shredder in check, which is very nice. Opponent looks at the top of my deck. So they know about this Dryad. Well, don't have the land, so <laughs> here you go. White blue, what do you got, opponent? What do you got? Unearth cycled. Yeah, that one works. Lock. Another prime time. Okay, so this means that now I can. This means that now I can pitch one of these prime signs to the force if I really need to. So it's not good, but it's not the absolute worst. So yeah, obviously we got super crazy punished for... We got wildly punished for bottoming the Celestia Sanctuary, right? Would have been in much better shape right now if we had access to the Sanctuary. Academy Manufacturer. So I'm probably going to blow this up here. I guess I can wait until my opponent's upkeep. So if I find a land, uh, hopefully a bounce land, then I can just hop. Awesome. Yeah, so now I can just hard cast the, the force. Boop, boop. And now if I find any untapped land or I find a bounce land, we are going to be good to go. Another thought seize doesn't do it. Unearth. Okay. Not bad, not bad. Karn, just snap result. So let's see what we got in the good old sideboard. I think we're gonna boat. Uh, actually, my opponent cannot pressure the card, so I'm just gonna go for uh, coating. We're gonna go for liquid metal coating. Can get them off of white mana. So even if I don't find the land, I can, I can keep the godless shrine. I can block the coldest, the golden shrine. I mean, yeah, there we go. All right, sweet. Why well, not? Karn doing Karn things once again. Yeah, funny because we wouldn't have, <laughs> wouldn't have eaten the land for a minute. But yeah, Karn's just, just good. See you next round. Here we go, round number two. Um, I like this hand. Yep, I do like this hand. So the saga is gonna be my primeval titan, I guess. Giganta, mono red prowess. Okay, so I think that I want to try to high roll. What I mean by this is that I wanna go for the Ursa saga here to try to raise my opponent and try to pop this saga before my opponent has time to get a, um, uh, get a blood money to play. So that I can at least get a little bit of value from this from this saga. Uh, we already have the Dryad to help us through the blood moon. And I think I'm gonna be finding, I think I'm gonna be finding um, expedition map from the saga if I manage to get there. And the reason for that is so, the reason for, for that is so I can find Boseju if I need to. The only question is whether I want to play Dryad this coming turn or whether I want to make a Construct token. I think I want to make a Construct, but I'm honestly not super sure. And I'm blocking here, 100%. If my opponent wants to bolt me or like level dart me, okay. There's a dart. That's fine. Jeez, DRC is already delirious. So crazy. 
I think I'm gonna make it one one here though. Hmm, actually, hmm. Let's see what we draw. Let's see what we draw first. <laughs> the Weldurks, the expedition map. Uh, that's the one that I wanted to draw. So I guess that we're not gonna that I wanted to get from the saga. So I guess we're not getting that. So question is, yeah, I think I'm gonna make a construct. Name giant here, and I think I'm gonna make a construct. And the reason to make a construct here is so if my opponent wants to blow it up, they know that they have to blow it up right now, which puts them down a land, which means no moon. I'm gonna take it here. I'm not gonna make the construct because the construct means that um, they get to kill the token and I take one more damage. Soul Scrimmage. Okay, it's not a blood moon. So here's this. So now if my opponent wants to kill this, they have to do it now. Yep. Oh, they have another Lava Dart. Interesting. Okay, so with them having another Lava Dart, I think I'm gonna make another construct. We make another construct, forces my opponent uh, to suck a land now. They messed up real bad, by the way. They had to do this while I was I was stopped up. So now they're gonna have to find another answer. Huge mistake. By the way, very tasteful mountains from my opponent. Big fan. It's pretty neat. All right. So now the lava that resolves, get an amulet, and we're going to. Huh. I can play the dryad, but if I play the dryad, it doesn't. Re... Actually, never mind. It does do something for me, because I can. I can then uh, play map, and I can potentially crack the map for. Um, crack the map for. What am I trying to say here? Crack the map for uh, what's his name? Um, Either Valakut or the other card, the the Tularist. Um I think I'm holding back to block. It's not a Blood Moon. It is pretty scary, however. <laughs> All right. I mean, that basically makes it so it's free for them to flash back the Lava Dart, so it's not the worst thing. And I guess that knowing that my opponent is playing a Reckless Impulse deck, I'm going to actually force the blocks here. And the reason to force the blocks is my opponent has to discard, they have to sacrifice their lands. And because, and if they have to sacrifice their lands, then we can potentially, um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm blocking like this. So this forces my opponent to actually shoot my, my stupid constructs, which don't do anything. But yeah, now if my opponent sacrifices the land, then they're not gonna be able to multi-spell. So Reckless Impulse into Blood Moon, which is the thing that I'm the most scared of, about. And because I'm forcing my opponent to, to get the Lava Darts here, I'm going to be taking a bunch of damage from the Soul Scar Mage. So that's why I'm actually putting, you know, the... I'm actually putting the Gracer in front of the Soul Scar as opposed to putting the, it in front of the DRC. So this Lava Dart is going face, which means that we're killing this guy. And my opponent ordered their blocks, so the one that has a minus one minus one counter would die. So I guess they, I guess they only need to point one of these here. Huh, bottom in lightning bolt. Interesting. Okay, prime time. Karn. Well, that works. So we can Karn for EE on one, but if we do, then we can't crack the expedition map. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm just gonna crack map and transmute. So play land, crack map. We still have the two, two, two block here. Oh, we're only gonna be taking three, four, and we can jump with the dry if we need to. T West. And I'm gonna uh, make the mana off here. That leaves me the option to fetch for a basic mountain if I have to. So blue, blue, blue. Obviously I meant basic forest. <laughs> Not basic mount. Transmute. Summoner respect. Your go. Leave my dudes back to block. So I'm at a virtual eight right now. Potentially seven. So with only two cards, I don't think my opponent can kill me. Barring, obviously, Blood Moon. Should very likely attack, I imagine. Huh. Well, can't block that one, so... Down to eight we go. What do you got, OP? They just passed the turn. Huh. Okay. So let's play this first. I think we're gonna bounce the cavern. So we have more mana in play. And I think we're just gonna get Valakid plus Stronghold. And Holy Heat my Dryad. Well, good to know about this right now, that's for sure. So we're gonna be Bojugabogging. <clears throat> and now that the Dryad's dead, I think, I think I do want to 
play around it. So removal that is, of course. So let's balance this, cast this, prime time, play prime time. Um, do we think my opponent has another unholy hit in hand? They did not put Giganta in hand for what's worth. So I think it's actually likely that they do. So I think because of that, I'm going to go Bojugevog plus Bounce Land. And this allows me to Karn. This allows me to Karn minus. So if they have hit, they have to hit right now, which means that the hit is going to get exiled by the Bojugevog. And I'm going to fetch right now because the Dryad's gone and I want to make sure that I just don't randomly die to Blood Moon. So Bounce Bojugevog, play my Karn. And I'm gonna minus for boat. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so I get to boat next turn. So let's minus for boat. I'm gonna say go. And again, I'm playing conservatively because I think that it's the only way that I lose the game. If I if I get too aggressive and then I have to, you know, I block with the prime time, my opponent finds a way to kill it. So as long as I take it easy like I am right now then I don't think that I can really lose. I am at seven though, so I guess that technically I could just get um, get bolted out of the game, technically speaking, because I don't have Radiant Fountain in my deck. Well, there's an Holy Heat, but they're not gonna have Delirium. Block. All right, sweet. So, 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 so. We can only 12 of them, so I don't see any value in, in activating prime time. Well, Asusa allows me to do some nasty stuff. Huh. I kind of want to minus for Ballista. Hmm. So let's attack first. With attack, I think we're going to get Castle because it is one more uh, mana for Ballista. And then a green source. Castle plus green source. We're not going to have any packs to pay here, so this is fine. And now this is going to be six, and then one, two. Yeah, let's just go for the ballista. One, two, three, four. That's one, two, three. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So ping that. Sweet. All right. Winning game one versus mono red. It's very nice. So I think I don't want Karn, even though it was absolutely great there, but I still don't think I want it. So instead of Karn, I think I want access to Engineer Explosives. My opponent showed me Monkey. Monkey's an interesting card because Monkey and DRC both together make me want Walking Ballista, but I think I'm going to go with Sky Sovereign instead. I think it's close though. I do think that it's close. I'm going to be cutting one Ursa Saga. Because I'm expecting Blood Moon. So probably two Ursa Sagas. I'm expecting Blood Moon and Magus. So we have access to Sky Sovereign. And we could also have access to Ballista as another answer to Magus of the Moon. So I think that's good. I think I actually do want the Ballista. And because we have access to three Bosages and we actually have the um, only two Sagas, I think I can, I can probably cut the Expedition map. Yeah, so let's go with this. Just playing Mono Green Midrange. <laughs> let's see if this works out. I just realized that I'm playing against back-to-back -back Giganta gamers. You don't see that every day. Do I like this hand? This hand is actually quite close. Like, this hand's good against Blood Moon, but it's bad against ru getting rushed. Like, if my opponent goes turn one monkey, this hand is just a death sentence. But if they are on the Blood Moon plan, then, then this hand is actually quite fantastic. I think I'm going to keep it. It's a very skeptical hand. It's a very, very skeptical hand. Like, if my opponent goes for for turn one monkey, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. But if they don't have the exactly a turn one monkey style hand, if, if they're keeping, like, a slower hand on the strength of Blood Moon or Magus of the Moon, then we're going to get a ton of value from this hand. And I do think that I want to lead on turn one basic forest as opposed to Tolary West. Soul Scar Mage is definitely scary. Grazer. I'll take Amulet too. I mean, that's probably even better than... Uh, no, no, definitely Gracer would have been the better the better draw there. But Amulet at least allows him to turn to Dryad, which is obviously pretty good. No Shatter Effect is good. No Shatter Effect is good. I like. 
I like no shadow effects. So here's my dryad and here's my extra land. Here go. We get to Sky Sovereign next turn. And holy heat, my dryad. Do you have another one of those? Bolt. I call that a win. I definitely call that a win. So I think we're going to boat here. If I boat, that means that I'm not going to be... I'm not going to be tightening for a minute. But if I boat, it seems hard for my opponent to be able to race me. So I think it's worth it. Maybe this is wrong. It's possible this is wrong. We could pack for Endurance to crew the boat, which is pretty neat. Then we would die to Blood Moon, so we're kind of choosing, choosing our own destiny there a little bit. Shattering Spree is pretty strong. Shattering Spree with the, the Replicate cost. So they blow up both of my artifacts. Not bad, not bad. Not bad. It's not a blood moon though. But Jukibo would be a pretty good draw. We're a pretty healthy life total. Another amulet. Uh, okay. So let's go stronghold play amulet, say go. Unless my opponent puts a lot of pressure on my life total right now, I'm just gonna chill on the summoner's back. That's a DRC. Not too scared of the DRC. Prime time will be great. No prime time. So I definitely want Bojugabog. And I think I'm going to be a coward. Oh, I should oh, I should have played uh, Toleru. No, no, this is fine. This is fine. So cast Summon Respect, prime time. And here I can either haste or I can be a coward. I think I want to haste. Because I'm going to, I may fall a little bit behind otherwise. But if my opponent has an unholy hit here, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. Putting my stock on the fact that they don't have it. So Bujukabog and Basic Forest were going to be my picks here. Sweet. 2-0. Feels good to beat the, the prowess deck. All right, round number three. Here we go. Uh, great hand. Keep it. So this is turn two Dryad, turn three prime time. On the draw. So we can be disrupted. Like, things can go all right here, but... Oh, that's pretty good too. So let's lead on that then. Yeah, the, the amulet there, I think it's better than the Gracer. It's not 100% because it depends on what my opponent's up to, which I don't know what it is. But I think that overall, there's going to be less answers to amulet than... I guess that Prismatic Ending is a card, but with Verdant Catacombs being the first the first play, I don't, I'm not too scared, I don't think. Um, so here's Dryad. And now we do have an interesting question here, which is... Do I want to play around my amulet getting blown up? And I think the answer is yes, by doing... I, I, I don't want to do that, but I do get to play around Inquisition of Ghost Select, which is nice. This also plays around Liliana, because now my opponent can't Liliana minus my Dryad. So I think playing the Gracer here is correct. If my opponent doesn't have an answer for the amulet, then we're going to uh, kill. <clears throat> we're going to be able to Titan next turn, uh, whether the Dryad lives or not. Uh, but I think that... Playing around my opponent answering the Dryad is more important than playing around my opponent answering the Amulet. And the reason for that is that, um, you know, I could have played around my opponent answering the Amulet, but then that would have required me to go Celestine Sanctuary of the Gracer so that I have two on top lands. All right. Um, I don't want to block here. Sunhome is almost a heinous draw there, but not absurdly heinous, fortunately for me. We're going to go for Haste, and I think I'm killing the Renin 6. Uh, what do we bounce here is interesting. I think we're going to bounce a Bounce Land. Opponent has clearly shown that they don't have an answer to the Amulet. So this goes at Ren. Yes, and now I think we're just going to go T-West plus Growth Chamber. We could go for Bojukabog, but having the second blue source to go along... With our T-West seems more important. I think I'm going to bounce the... <laughs> this is interesting. Do I want to develop my mana? Like, I definitely want to keep this both of these lands in play, so next turn I can play a bounce land and transmute. I think I'm just going to bounce the Sanctuary here, actually. It's going to make the Goyf a little bit bigger, but I'm not scared of the Goyf. And if my opponent attacks with the Goyf, I'm still taking it. I'm not chomping, again, because of Liliana. Liliana is basically a blank right here. Unless they can double it up with Fatal Push or another Bolt. The weird thing about how I, how I play the right here 
is that now it's a little bit tricky. Hmm. Death Shadow. That's a lot scarier. So, Planeswalker Instant Land. I don't think I see anything that I'm too scared about here. Even if they have Fatal Push, I don't care. Hmm. I think I'm going to play out the Double Strike Land and attack. Attack. And we're going to get Valakut plus Fetch Land. I don't want Enable Push. Sweet. Shadow, huh? Well, Khan is historically pretty bad against Death Shadow decks. Uh, I like Endurance against Unholy Heats and Coatings and stuff like that. Um, Engineer Explosive looks good. Really good, actually. I don't think I want Sky Sovereign or Ballista. I think Cultiva Cultivator is fine as a one-off. Um, I don't think I care for Boseju. Cut a Cavern and call it a day. I think this looks good. I could consider Khan on the play. I think Khan on the play is a lot, lot better. But on the draw, when my opponent is just way too likely to get ahead on board, I think I'd rather do this. Maybe I should be bringing in... I, I think I'm going to bring in Ballista, because it's it's very likely my opponent has Magus, now that I think about it. Yeah, uh, made a mistake there. Um, I'm thinking about it a little bit more, and my opponent could have access to Magus, which makes me... really wants me to... makes me want to have access to... To Ballista. This hand looks good though. I like this hand, keep it. Very good against Monkey. Can go turn one Boseju, Gracer, play Valakut. Okay. Just did the double trick. Play Boseju, Gracer. Here's the Valakut, here we go. It's a Goif. Huh. So I think I'm, I'm just gonna play Dryad here. Green mana. Play Dryad, and I know that I have the Valakut here, but I think that this is like uh, this is likely to die, so I'm just gonna copy my opponent's Stomping Ground, just because it's a green source. But I think that uh, taking that turn off to ramp is pretty nice. Inquisition, all right. I could pack for prime time in response, but that time walks me, so if my opponent takes the Pact, then I still have good plays for my next turn. My opponent should still probably take the Pact anyways. Actually, the Explore threatens a lot here. I have a Valakut in play. Explore is crazy threatening here, which is very funny to think about. This Goyf gets in there, I'm just gonna take the hit. Don't care. I'm gonna push my Dryad. Terminate the Dryad, okay. Um, hmm. So now I'm not afraid of, <laughs> of Magus anymore, huh? I think I'm gonna Explore here though. You do the explosives on two, sounds good. My opponent can Boseju the EE, but if they do, then I get a land, which is nice. <laughs> it actually helps me, since, I, since I'm missing land drops here. Thoughtsis is very good, however. Thoughtsis is a fantastic draw for them. So now we are actually in trouble. Now we are actually in trouble. I'm still not going to take the block here, because I can just uh, blow up the Goyf next turn. So I'm going to play this. We're gonna play this on, we already have double green, so I think I'm actually gonna play this on Beast and pass the turn. The question now is, huh, my opponent did nothing last turn with three mana, so I think now I am going to take the chomp. Because what this does is gives me another turn where I just don't have to crack these explosives. So I can just chill here. I think my opponent has a two drop in hand, either another Goif or a Renin Six. So I, by chomping, that's a time walk chomp, <laughs> which seems strong. DRC is a good draw for them, though. Unholy hit my grazer. Yeah, that's a statement. That's a statement. Uh, now I am going to have to crack and kill the Eternal Goyf, which is very unfortunate. I think my opponent has another Goyf in hand. Uh, but I don't think I can go down to six because then the DRC just kills me. And now next turn I can draw a blocker for the second Goyf. Oh, Torak. I'm a lot less scared about that one. Bojukabog. Not the worst draw. I've seen worse than that one. I've definitely seen worse than that one. So now we can just draw a Primeval Titan and we just win. Take three. Prime time? Oh! <laughs> oh, that's brutal. <laughs> that's brutal. So we die to a fetch land. Oh, no, we're actually just dead. I forgot to count the three that I took last turn. Oh, that's brutal, man. <laughs> uh -oh. Ugh. 
All right, game number three. Now we're on the play. I think I'm a little bit more excited about the Karns on the play. So now the Colossus can come out. We can bring in three Karns. Um, maybe cut a Saga? No, I just don't think my opponent has Magus. I just don't think they have Blood Moon effects. So Saga becomes a lot better. So I think this is just fine. I do like Explore. Let's just do two Karns. Let's do two Karns. I think that's fine. All right, game number three. This hand is very interesting. This hand is super interesting. I think I'm gonna keep it. Now the question is, do I want to Saga on turn one? Because if I Saga on one, I guess if I don't Saga on one, then I'm not gonna Saga until turn five, turn four. No, I'm not gonna Endurance until turn four. So that means I don't get any value from this Saga. I actually think I want to take some value from the Saga, so I'm just going to take it super slow. I really want to dodge a Monkey, but the problem is that my opponent could have a Discord spell here, right? And if they do have a Discord spell, then... Yeah. So now we go with Saga. I guess they could also have Alpine Moon, but I didn't see Alpine Moon last game, and we played for a while. The Natty Bog is going to keep this DRC in check, which is nice. And if my opponent's plays the Bujugi Bog here, then we're looking really, really good. Inquisition of Kozilek. Okay, play that out. So you go. Opponent plays Meyer. So now they're gonna start dropping shadows if they have them. We do have the Natty Bog, which is very nice. So I'm gonna probably save it until the turn that I cast Prime Time. We're just gonna play it slow with these Saga tokens, though I think. But I think I'm fetching Amulet off of the Ursa Saga, as opposed to fetching. A map and now, now i wish i had colossus in my deck like this is a fantastic colossus hand i think what do you got opponent what do you got over there i think if my opponent offers the trade i'm gonna take it like if they attack sure they can instant speed and kill my my construct but they can do that anyway and i force them to use their mana on their turn and then i get two on my turn just for jugabog their stuff which is nice so i don't think they're gonna attack here's a construct here is another construct I think I'm bugging now, and I'm obviously not attacking here. We're just chilling. I don't want to enable my opponent's shadow. Angel Grudge. Okay. It's a little bit annoying, but it's not really the end of the world. We have multiple top decks that put me in a very, very advantageous position. Namely, Asusa. Asusa is probably my best top deck. Asusa, Dryad. I'm going to take two here. So Asusa, Dryad are my best top decks, hands down. Explore and Gracer are also fantastic. It's technically, technically a Dryad. Or an Asusa, whatever I want. Hmm. Hmm. I probably have to, right? I probably have to take this turn off. Opponent doesn't have Goif, which is good. We really want to dodge Torak. That's probably the single card that I'm the most scared of. And I'm going to sequence my lands here. Um, so that I can guarantee um, that I get to play this Bajuga Bog. And I think I bog my opponent. They could have an Earth or shenanigans like that. There's definitely an argument for bogging myself because it's better against Goif. But uh, this gets rid of the Grudge and it gets rid of the card that the DRC triggers. So I think it's worth it. I just want to get them as further away from Delirium as I can. Also, I'm kind of surprised that they wouldn't take the Mire. Like, they, their shadow is like a baby shadow. I would think they would want to grow it. So if they do have, like, a Magus effect, we lose. Terminate. Well, now I'm super happy that I went for this. Heat. Heat on the Construct. Feels good for me. And Shadow is still tiny. They been a Thoughtseize? That has to mean that they have another one, right? It both grows the shadow and gets rid of my prime time hand? They know about the prime time. I am very confused. I am very, very confused here. All right, pass the turn. Like, they just have to have another prime time, right? Is the only reasonable explanation. Another Thoughtseize, I mean. Inquisition's not Thoughtseize. Do you also have the Thoughtseize? So they, they do take my Explorer, which sucks for me a little bit, but... Hmm. So... Well, that's interesting. Um, so I can't cast this this turn, but I think we're going to go for prime time. 
And I think my opponent has an answer to the prime time. So I'm gonna go for one Saga and Valakut, I think. I could also go for Growth Chamber plus Valakut. Growth Chamber plus Valakut, what it does is it allows me to transmute this T-West. Because next turn I can just go play this, bounce here. Uh, I, I could also go Growth Chamber Saga. I could also go Growth, growth Chamber Radiant Fountain. Man, all of these are very interesting alternatives. Again, I'm assuming this is that this is dead. I think I'm gonna go for Valakut to turn this Dryad into a threat. I may get punished for this. I may get punished. And we're gonna bog right here to prevent minimize the chances that my opponent is gonna get delirium. Again, I do think they have a terminate, so I do think this prime time is gonna die. Yeah, you wanna wait for this to resolve opponent. Oh, they're gonna heat and hope to lock sack. Yikes. <laughs> that's a ballsy ballsy move opponent that's a ballsy ballsy move so they were trying to luck sack off of the drc <laughs> I, that, I mean that was, i i have to give it to them that was a cool play that was a cool play but you know just obviously did not work um so we're just gonna ee -E here oh i don't even have to i can just attack and just kill them all right sweet three and oh you love to see it Round number four, and uh, yeah, this hand's not gonna do it. Ship it. I'm trying to convince myself to keep this hand. Pretty close to a Titan. I think I'm gonna actually keep this. We're on the draw, and I think I'm gonna bottom redundant Karn as opposed to redundant prime time. And the reason for that is that I have castles, so I only need one land, and Titan is obviously the most the more impactful card. Oh, we're playing a mirror. Well, this hand sucks in the mirror. <laughs> it's a terrible hand for the mirror. Fortunately for me, my opponent's playing Battlements, which puts me ahead because they can't win without a Dryden play. So that makes it so my my forces in the side row are gonna be that much better. Contrary to what most people think, I think Karn is actually pretty bad in the mirror. <sighs> so if I play Amulet and say go, I can play am um, um, i can go bounce land gracer bounce land back for asusa cast prime time so i think it's correct for me to play the the prime time the amulet and just miss my land drop here and then next turn i can tighten an attack opponent has moseju in play which is good for me just makes it less likely that they have another one in hand well now they have balseju in hand <laughs> so that's bad for me <laughs> very quickly went from that's good for me to that's bad for me. Oh, they actually have a primeval time in play, so that's also bad for me. So now we have to top the exactly amulet, and if my opponent plays well, then I actually can't win. So they have Bosejo in hand, that's known information, but I can't die. Literally, there's no permutation of cards that kills me here. The issue is that I also can't win. So that part sucks. All right, opponent hastes, doing their thing. <sighs> Man, this was almost good enough. This was almost, almost good enough. Bounce land and the second Valakut is what they get. So I'm assuming they have the Dryad in hand. I still can't die here. <laughs> Literally the worst possible draw in the entire deck. <laughs> All right, all right. That was not that was not our game to <laughs> that was not our game to win. <laughs> I do like forces here, and I think that's it. It's actually funny that I could bring in Peeling Needle and name Battlements, <laughs> and it doesn't affect me at all. Uh, I don't think it's worth it, but it's actually funny that you know that's that's the case. Uh, I think that's it. I don't think I want anything else. Yep. Just go with this. Oh my, oh my, this hand. I kind of want to keep it. I think I'm going to keep it. Oh, it's so bad, but I kind of want to keep it. So we're gonna turn one Saga because I'm, I'm planning to save this Gracer so that I can pitch it to the Force. Opponent's got a Gracer hand, which is bad for me. An Amulet hand would be a lot better for how my, my hand is shaping up. Well, that's something I can blow up like that. So here's a Buseju and go. 
I'm not particularly scared of the construct, um, and I'd rather my opponent overextend into this force. Like I feel like that's how I win. Like, I mean, that's why that's why I kept the hand, right? <laughs> because I could do this kind of thing. I guess there's even an argument for me just like passing the turn, getting an amulet off of this saga, and then playing the vestige, and then just actually cast just hard casting the force and saving the gracer yeah i think i'm gonna do that actually if my opponent plays something right if they play like a dryad or something and i can't prevent them from getting the extra land drop from the dryad so i'm just f6 here there's a castle so everyone's just gonna make some constructs untap procedure we'll here okay well, that's fine whatevs <laughs> Now if I don't blow this up, my opponent can prime time me because of the castle. That's really awkward. I think I can't beat that, so I'd rather just say go here. And I'm actually gonna F6. I think my opponent just is gonna be able to prime you Titan me here, but I don't think that I win a game where that happens anyways. So because of that, oh, 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 that changes things. So now if they have a bounce land, they can blow up in response. But my plan is going to be the same that I just suggested before. I'm just going to untap Crumble Invest and just hardcast this force. But now I think that if they play a bounce land, I just blow up the... Okay, they, they did. So now we can just safely F6. And if my opponent wants to blow up the, the my amulet with a Poseidon one more time, I, I'll take that. I don't care. It's a bounce land, but that's not prime time mana, so I don't care. So they don't have prime time because they did have the bounce land. So I'm just gonna play this out. Name uh, giant. We're gonna ship it again. Second amulet. There's nothing we can do here, so we're just going to. If they have the titan, we're just gonna let my opponent do the thing here. Oh, they have colossus. They have colossus. Colossus at least allows me to uh, force now, and they at least don't. They don't make the mana. I'm still in a lot of trouble now. But I have draws though. If I find another amulet, I guess I need. I just need a bounce land or Vesuva. I need a bounce land or Vesuva. So I have to imagine that my opponent's hand is a bunch of gas over there. Just bad for me. If they do bounce, we'll say you. And play out another amulet. It's a bounce land. So we packed for Asusa. That allows me to attack with prime time, but if I want to force, then I'm gonna be one turn behind. The problem is my opponent has Balsaju in hand, so if I don't go for it now, then I'm not gonna be able to go for it next turn either. So that probably means that we just have to go for it here, and they could have, um, what's his name, right? Also, I messed up my second thing here. I should have I should have played this before doing anything, but I just don't think my opponent has the force here. Um, this is Susa, play bounce land, make mana, bounce, play bounce. Oh, I should have bounced a uh, vestige there. My bad. Um, well, I guess I can just bounce Poseidon now. So that's probably better. Garrison, stronghold, haste here, bouncing what? Stronghold? Garrison, I guess. I probably have to blow this up. But I also have to get to Larry West. But then, but then, uh, my opponents will say you blow up my T West. That's super, super annoying. Um, so I guess I'm gonna go double growth chamber here. Bounce this and bounce this. And I think I'm just gonna blow up these two. Uh, I guess that I. Interesting. All right. I think I'll just actually pass the turn. Because now I can force, like, I don't care about this the construct token. And if my opponent, again, like my opponent's Titan doesn't scare me because my Titan is better than theirs. So if they go for a Dryad, I can just blow up the Dryad. And then next turn, I, can, I also have another answer for the Dryad. That's why I bounced the Stronghold, by the way, so my opponent can't copy it. That's the land for turn. Because my opponent is just playing around like counter magic or something. I mean, sure. <laughs> Whatever. That's cool. We do have a pack to pay for next turn. Another amulet. Opponent goes to combat. Very interesting. Well, I think we're gonna blow up the saga and one of these amulets. Sure. So they have Boseju and Unknown in hand. Boseju and Unknown. 
are my opponent's cards in hand. Paper backed, see the draw. So this makes it so, I guess my opponent needs to besage you the dryer, otherwise they just lose. That's cool. Um, what are we doing here? Probably need to double strike. So I'm just gonna go Vestige here. Gonna make green mana, play a Dryad, and make some extra mana. Bouncy in the growth chamber. So now I have maxed out my mana. We get to swing. And now I get to go Valakut plus Sun Home. And I, I'm gonna send everything face. So now everyone needs to boss I guess I should have I should have sent both at the Colossus actually. Because now if my opponent bossages my my Sun Home, I get one more Valakut trigger. Yeah, maybe that was a mistake actually. Like I know for a fact they have Bossage in hand. <clears throat> but the Dryad fixes my white mana, so that's why I play the Vestige pre-combat. Opponent is indeed blowing up the Dryad, so I want to make sure that I float the white mana here. And now my Titan double strikes. I need keyword big. Oh, they have another Boseju? Ooh, that's brutal. So their hand was double Boseju. That's kind of devastating, actually. Yeah, that's that's kind of brutal, actually. So now they can trade their their Cultivator for my Titan. A trade they should take, by the way, obviously. Honestly, I'm surprised they didn't take this trade last turn. So now it's a top deck war, where I have a better board state and more lands, but whoever top decks the Titan wins, probably. That I don't care about. Yeah, Construct doesn't do anything. Sanctuary! Huh. I think I'm gonna offer the trade here. Five Yan Nerd. Alright, pass the turn. <clears throat> we can do that again next turn if we want. Oh, come on, man! <laughs> God damn it! Ugh. Well, the good thing here is that. So they get Valakut plus Haste Land. And I have to blow up the Haste Land and then top deck my own Titan. And if I do, I win. So that's the plan. So I have one draw step. I have one draw step to win this game. All right, so my opponent, <laughs> they copy Stronghold. Huh. So what this means is that I can't stop them from hasting. That's pretty smart. That's actually a pretty smart play from my opponent. So now they get to attack with prime time. And I guess they're gonna get like Valakut Saga or something. And we get to kill the Dryad. So what they should get is Toleria West plus Valakut probably. That makes their top decks much better. If they go for double Valakut, then we actually have a pretty good shot at winning this game. I guess they could go for like Saga Valakut. Saga Valakut is another another reasonable choice. Man, the double Boseju was brutal. Double Boseju covered all the angles from my opponent. Even though they punted, they could have traded the Cultivator a turn earlier, denying me two extra land drops. So they punted, but then their their top decks were they top deck dried into prime time like straight up. <laughs> Literally, I don't think that you could you can top deck any better than that. <laughs> I don't think that there are any better top decks than those two. So I think I'm gonna blow up the T West here, and now if I find now if I find a Primeval Titan off the top, I actually get to. Uh, turn the tables on them because I can go get um, I'm gonna take 10 here, but I, I top deck prime time and then we have a bunch of mana things to a Susa amulet and we're gonna be able to cast a titan that my opponent's gonna be forced to chomp with and Okay, so Valakut kills my Asusa, I guess That's fine. I don't think that really changes anything. I have all the mana that I want Yeah, I just don't have the cards to do anything though um, yep, opponent top deck better than we did, so we lost. Feels bad. Oh uh, yeah, we were definitely not getting there. All right, see you next round. Last round, here we go. No lander, let's ship it. <laughs> For a 32 land deck, we're surely not hitting our land drops. Uh, so this is to five, I'm gonna bottom the Colossus and this layer stronghold. Uh, this hand's not great though. I don't think I like this hand. It's not a good multi five. 
This deck's capable of some pretty strong wall to fives, but wow, mono green Tron, dude. No, that's a blast from the past. All right, so we find growth chamber. I think I'm gonna go just Gracer into Bog, because this is just so much better if we do find an amulet. And if we find a three drop ramp creature, we can it still sets up our, a, a turn three Titan. So because of that, I think that it's correct for us to do this. We're making our, our top decks better, because now we can draw one of our four amulets and still uh, present a turn three Titan. Oh yes. Ah, uh, yes, the classic Tron gamer that does not keep turn 3 Tron. That's, uh, that's a primeval titan. <sighs> well, we have the time to get there. So if I packed for Azusa here, it doesn't really change anything, right? So I'm just gonna play the castle because, again, I continue to make my amulet top deck a lot better. Um, but, yeah, like, I, I need, if I had top deck an Azusa there or, or a Dryad, we would be in business, but... Primetime is the one that we did not have to draw. Chromatic Sphere. Alright, turn 4, Tron. Here we go. The bad part is that it's probably going to be good enough. Punished. <laughs> Punished for my sequencing. That sucks. Alright, I, I think that we probably can't win anyway. Um, our multi five just did not come together. Like, I don't think that Karn would have really changed anything. We're going to see what my opponent does here. Just probably just buck it in. I guess they could have a O stone. If they have a O stone, then we may be in okay shape. But we can't be the Carnivore Creator. We can't be the Carn Liberated. Can't be the Lulamog. I guess my opponent could make a mistake, right? They could not get coding here. But the right place to coding and then on my upkeep um, target the, the growth streamer. And then punished again by the, the Carn, right? By uh, my land. Right, because otherwise Karn blanks the coding. Opponent did not make the mistake. And now we lose. Alright, game number two. Karn is actually very good in this matchup, so excited to have it. Uh, Colossus is interesting because he can, it can go over the top of what my opponent's doing. I think Boseju is very good. I think Force is reasonable, particularly because I, usually whenever I see Karn, uh, the Great Creator, I like Force of Vigor. But if I don't see Karn, I'm not super stoked about it. Um, that's kind of it. So I'm going to cut uh, one Explore and one Cavernous Souls, I think. Yeah, let's go with this. Game number two, what do we got here? What do we got? Um, interesting. So we can go turn one, turn two, turn three, we get an Amulet. Yeah, I think I like this hand, actually. Um, obviously, the Construct Tokens don't really do anything. Well, do they not do anything? <laughs> actually, the Construct Tokens pressure Karn, the Great Creator. So I think I'm, I'm going to lead on Boseju. We can go Boseju into Saga. And then we can Boseju my opponent on turn two. It's not a bad draw. Not a bad draw at all. Steerings. Steerings into what? Into Ursa's Power Plant. Okay, so I think I'm going to have the tower here. I think blowing up the tower is the better line there. Maybe wrong there. Um, so we have to vestige now and make the token now, which seems fine. Next turn, we're gonna get to Karn, which is pretty good. I'll turn out we could have bossed you there, blowing up the power plant. We could have played the bounce land and used the mana from bossed you. So this is gonna find. Tower, there it goes. Delicate. You know, we're just gonna go for Karn here. Float mana, get my amulet. And do I want to bounce land? I think I want to bounce land. I want to. I want to play the bounce land. That is. I guess alternatively, I could blow up the tower with this Boseju. Play Karn next turn. Three, four. Or I could back for Asusa. If I backed for Asusa, I can Asusa. I can Isusa Karn and Boseju, but then we lose to my opponent's Boseju though. I oh, know, actually we have Vestige, so we can go um, Pact for Asusa, three mana, play Sanctuary, bounce Vestige, play Vestige, play Growth Chamber. We lose to this member. No, we don't, because we can sequence our lands properly. Yeah, okay, let's do that actually. 
that makes it so I can do both things. I can, I can just do everything. So packed for Asusa, play Asusa, play this out, green, make some mana. And I'd rather do this than liquid metal coating here because coating, um, I could have also tightened there, but I think that this is just better, right? Because it denies my opponent's draw steps. So we go for coating here and then I, I guess we get to swing too, which is nice. So swing and upkeep Seiji or tower. I always forget that Asusa makes it so Seiji costs one less. <laughs> but yeah, I don't think there's anything my opponent, because if I we go for Titan and then my opponent, if they, uh, like, um, something like a, what's his name? Like an Oblivion Stone slips through the cracks or something. But here, Boseju doesn't do it. Ghost Quarry, for, for, for whatever reason my opponent's playing, also doesn't do it. I think there are no cards. I guess Beast Within. If my opponent somehow is playing Beast Within, we lose. But there's no way they're playing Beast Within. And now next turn, we just get to pay for Pact, play Coding, start blowing up lands. Opponent can never come back. But yeah, all of my opponent cantrips don't do anything. If they have Walking Ballista, that doesn't do anything either. We got them in the lock. Put in play Sources Mine. Let's see what they got. Karn, the Great Creator. Well, that's gonna die. Okay, that's cute. <clears throat> so that can now chump, I guess. Mm -hmm. We can needle. So they're gonna chump the construct. Yeah. So let's play Valakut. And we're going to attack coding. Um, so this can attack as a 4 4 5 5. So we're gonna send both at Karn the Great Creator. See how my opponent blocks. I assume they're just gonna chomp the construct. Yeah, so it doesn't matter. And now we can needle to deny my opponent from being able to do anything. What am I afraid of? What can my opponent get that would be a problem for me? Oblivion Stone doesn't do anything. Ensnaring Bridge, but if they draw Bridge, I just Valak it, it down. So I kind of wanna just plus. I could just minus for Sky Sovereign. Yeah, I'm just gonna minus for Sky Sovereign. And I'm gonna hold on to a land in hand in case my opponent Karn pluses. Uh, no, if they Karn plus, I'm just gonna exile this. So I'm gonna name Giant here. So you go. So now if my opponent minuses, uh, they, uh, they Karn, if they minus for Bridge, the Karn just dies too. Sky Sovereign, and then I just go ham on my opponent's lands. So they could technically just have, you know, third to uh, just tower here into something good, but there's the tower. So the best thing would be, well, they can't do anything. They can't just do anything. So I guess it depends on what my opponent does. Because I still have like this random construct token is, is putting a lot of pressure on what, on what my opponent can or can't do. Also, opponent does not know about the prime time that I have in hand. So even if they play Carnal Liberator that blow up my land, I can still go like Sky Sovereign, kill Karn, and then Construct attack the other Karn, kill both, then Liquid Middle Coding, blow up the tower. All right, so Burn tanks for a bit and they play a Worm Coil Engine and nothing else, which is best case scenario. So do we have a lethal? Because I can play my prime time I swing, I, I haste, replay, and I can double strike if I want to. I double strike, and opponent chumps with the Worm Coil Engine. They take 10 plus 4 from the Construct and 1 from the Asusa, so that's not lethal. I can't activate coding, so I can't grow the Construct, but I can Sky Sovereign, I guess. So I think the play is to just haste Titan instead, uh, just uh, attack Karn instead. I don't think I can lose if I do this. Like I'm just going to play prime time, say yes, garrison, stronghold. This is going to activate haste Titan, use the extra land drops to replay garrison. And then from combat, I can find 
Stronghold and T West. So bounce this, play this as my second land drop, play this as my third land drop. Bounce here. And I guess we just attack with Primeval Titan. I think even Ugin doesn't do it because I can just chomp the Worm Call with Construct Token. So Sun Home to Larry West. And now we just have the threat of activation. But my opponent needs to throw in the Worm Call into the trash if they want to force me to activate. Otherwise, I just don't activate. So just double strike over there. This kills the Worm, kills the Karn. Coding tower. Sweet. All right, got there. Um, maybe there was a lethal line there by double tightening, but with a single amulet, I just don't think we would have had enough extra land drops. No, th th we wouldn't have been able to haste both. So double tighten doesn't do anything. Maybe there's a line towards Asusa Valak, uh, uh, Dryad Valakut. Definitely one of those find a line scenarios. But I think that my line was, I mean, obviously it was good enough to win, but. It's just very, very unlikely. With the Karn in play, it's very unlikely that my opponent can get past that. All right, uh, game number three. Now we're on the draw. Does that make me want to change anything? I kind of like Explore a little bit better. It's probably not as good as the other cards that I have. And again, with my opponent having Karn the Great Creator, I think the first copy of Force is fine. I don't think I basically ever want the second copy, but the first one seems good to me. This hand looks pretty strong. Let's keep it. Uh, unfortunately that we drew, you know, Stronghold and Garrison, but I think that we have enough moving pieces here, particularly with our green source being the Boseju. Second Boseju is a great, great pickup. Now it's a matter of do we want to Amulet or do we want to Gracer? I think I'm just going to play Boseju and Amulet and say go. See what my opponent does. And this gives me a bunch of options next turn. I can just Boseju the land, I can uh, Gracer into... Uh, if I draw a Karn, for example, I can just cast the, the Karn. So that's what holding on to the Gracer is better. Nature's Claim. Don't really care about that. I mean, it's slightly annoying, but it's not really that big of a deal. All right, so we have multiple options here. We can explore and hope that this works out. That allows me to develop my mana. It allows me to uh, draw more cards, see more options. We could just play my Stronghold and Boseju my opponent's land. The thing is that with them having the tower in play, they can at least have, at most, have two mana if they're planning to crack Expedition Map. And that gives me more options. I think I'm just going to try to lock sack here. Or I'm going to speculate a little bit. Yeah, because we can find something like that. Um... Soccer with legendary lands, but I think we're just gonna do this. I'm gonna bounce the Boseju there because we may find any other green source, and if that's the case, then I'd rather just have Boseju to blow up another land. But yeah, there's the expedition map being cracked. So my opponent did not have Ursus Mine, over, otherwise they would have just played it, right? Yeah, that's it's pretty good. So we can now go Amulet into Forest and draw step blow up the mine we blow up the mine and we're one green mana away from we're just one mana away from i think i'm supposed to grace her here i think i'm supposed to grace her that means that any land of the top allows me to titan if i don't grace her right now then next turn i'm not going to have double green right because i need to use one of the greens for the gracer so i think i'm supposed to grace her this turn also, while my opponent does not have color of the mana to blow up my amulet, and I can guarantee that I'm going to to be able to have access to Poseidon. To the end of source, that is. And now we're going to blow up the mine on my opponent's draw step. And then any land off the top is going to do it for us. Poseidon, your mine. So any land probably just wins the game straight up. Because Primetime is going to win the game straight up. I guess we could get Thought Not Seared. <laughs> that would be something. <laughs> that would certainly be something if we got Thought Not Seared. Warping Whale put a 1-1 one, one into play. Right? You got it. Did they never have the... Ch oh, that's why. Oh, maybe I should have done an upkeep? I don't think so. Alright. Is that going to be Karn Liberated? 
going up from an L. Okay, so any in top land. Any in top land. Easy. Gonna name Beast with this one. Actually, yeah. Now let's name Giant. So here we go. Um, what to do, what to do. I think we definitely want to bounce land so we can bounce Boseju. And maybe a Saga so we can pressure on the Karn. And the Saga can turn into... We have no packs to pay for. But the Saga can then turn into... Um, a, a way to pressure Planeswalkers. And then if, if, if eventually get Expedition maps so we can map for probably to Larry West. I imagine my opponent is going to have to minus on prime time here. Yep. Very close Karn. And now we're in top deck mode. Map. Expedition map. Are they going to crack it here? Second map. Okay. So it looks like no payoff. Looks to me like no payoff. So we're not going to be able to disrupt what my opponent's doing. But at least we're not dead. That's a good draw. It's a good top deck. That is a very good top deck. Draw that one for the kids. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, so we can go Vestige T West here. That looks good to me. So Vestige T West, and then on attack trigger, definitely want another green source so we don't just randomly die. So Vestige T West, name red here. Haste prime time. We still have a land drop, but I don't think there's a lot of value in blowing up. If we can only blow up one of my opponent's lands, I don't think there's a lot of value in doing so. So let's just get two growth chambers, just max on mana. Bounce this, and bounce on bounce this. So this gives me max maximum mana, and I'm just gonna play out the vestige, just to make my land drop. I'm trying to figure out whether the color matters. I guess that it doesn't really change anything because this is going to be... No, because this, this can actually be an expedition map. So how do we lose here? Ulamog, right? That's the only way that we can lose. So I'm just going to chill here because we probably need the extra lands for Cultivator Colossus so we can go over the top. But yeah, Ulamog is the only, is my opponent's only out at this point, I think. I don't think there's any any other card that matters. Like Counter Liberator, we beat easily. Counter Great Creator, we also beat easily. Ugin, we beat very easily. Worm Coil Engine is not a card in the matchup. So it's Ulamog or Bust. And we can probably find a way to beat the Ulamog also. There's the Ulamog. Ooh, Kosselek. Yeah, that one we don't care about. <laughs> that is not Ulamog. Come on, opponent. I guess my brother could have an answer to the Dryad. And maybe that's a problem. But we can just cast another prime time. And then we can just threaten to activate whichever one that goes unblocked. So, yeah, I think this is just fine. Also, my opponent went to get backup tower in mine, as opposed to getting Sanctum of Ugin, which surprises me. That's very weird to me. Why would you not go get Sanctum there? So make sure we don't lose to Pact. Ooh, that's a good draw. Okay, so three mana to transmute. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this looks like a prime time to me. I'm a little bigger. I think we want to go with this first. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. Yeah, this is fine. So transmute. Summoner's backed. Summoner's backed. Primeval Titan. Cast this guy. Yes. Now we're gonna do Vesuva plus Bounce Land, right? Yeah. Yeah, Vesuva plus Bounce Land. Vesuva here. Float mana, float mana. Bounce this, bounce this. Dryad. Probably play the Vestige here. Play Vestige. Make red mana. Kill you, super dead. Four on one. And there it goes. Nice little four on one. Only loss being to the mirror, where we just mulliganed to Oblivion. Uh, but um, hopefully that showcased uh, the strength of the deck, right? Like why I like Karn the Great Creator. Uh, Karn was uh, pretty clutch in a variety of scenarios. 
particularly against uh, decks where, you know, like against the, the Asmo deck, obviously, you find like random uh, decks like that one, which you can completely host with Karn, you can host uh, Hammer, you can host any sort of affinity nonsense, it gives you a shot in Yawgmoth, which I consider to be one of Amulet's, uh, if not the actual worst matchup out of all of the tier 1 decks, or like tier 1.5 or so, maybe Blue, Blue Red Merkta is a little bit better, but... Karn also pretty solid against Blue Red Merktide, right? Like having access to uh, an answer to Magus is a big deal in that matchup. Um, so Karn just kind of lines up well, I think, against the format in a way that uh, sometimes Colossus doesn't, right? Like Colossus is great against col for color specifically, where it's a way that you can really go over the top, but it requires a significant amount of setup. It's not a card that you just simply. It's not like the, the Tameshi Bloom deck when it's going off where Colossus is always going to be busted. Here you have to do your some real uh, setup, like some real work before your Colossus is sick. And you only have the time to do that against like blue-white, against the deck like for color. But in the in, in a sort of matchups, like even against blue-red Merktide, like I think Colossus is pretty bad in the Merktide matchup, particularly against all of the dress down decks as well. So like that, Karn plays very well around most common ways that your opponents will have of interacting with you. So Karn kind of circumvents that in a very, very convenient way. Dress Down becomes terrible against Karn, obviously. Um, you know, like Magus of the Moon, like oh, Karn doesn't care about any of those cards and it allows you uh, to have a very, very good proactive game plan that your opponent needs to respect. And then if your opponent spends a bunch of time and resources in order to respect the con game plan, then that uh, gives you the opening so you can potentially resolve it from Eagle Titan. So I think that Khan works really, really well right now. And this is the list that I would recommend. If I had an event this weekend, this is exactly the, the 75 that I would play. So um, hopefully you liked it. If, and if you did, make sure you let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you're new here, of course, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And if you're interested in coaching uh, or supporting the, cont the, the content in my uh, channel through either donations, uh, I can play any deck list of your choosing uh, on a video whenever, whenever you make a donation of $20 or more. And you can also support me through Patreon and stuff like that. But you can find all of that information in the description of the video down below. And once again, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.